Hi everyone, today I show you 8 extremely useful Python libraries for audio processing, so let's get started right away. The first one is for displaying and playing audio files and for this we can use IPython display so we import audio and display and then say display audio and then a file name. So here I have two WAV files that I prepared already and now I can simply execute this. And this is especially useful in an interactive uh, notebook like here in this Google Colab and now here we can display this and also play the sound. The second one is called sound file, so this can be used for simply reading and writing different formats like WAV, FLAC and then these ones. You can install it with pip install sound file, then we can import it and then we can for example read a WAV file and this will get us a numpy array and the sample rate so we can print data.shape and then we can also very simply say sound file.write and use a different format here. And if we run this and then have a look at the directory again, then we, here we see we have the new file. The next one is the wave module. This is actually a built-in module, so we don't have to install anything here. And this also allows us to open wave files and then also write new wave files. And the interface is a little bit more complicated than with sound file, but also not too hard. So we can simply say wave open in read mode and then we can access different parameters like the number of channels, the sample width, the frame rate, the number of frames. Then here we read the frames and the same way we can dump all the files. So now we open it in write mode and then we can set all the parameters again and then say object.write frames with the frames and close it again. So also pretty straightforward. The next one is Pi Audio, which offers Python bindings for port audio, which is a popular cross-platform audio I.O. library. So again, this can be used to read and write audio files, but also to read the microphone input. So for this, depending on your operating system, you might have to install a few extra libraries for port audio. Then you can say pip install pi audio. And then in this example script, I show you how we can read the microphone input. So for this, we import pi audio. Then we set up different parameters. Then we create a pi audio instance. And then we say p open with all the parameters to get a stream. And then we can read the stream. So here we read the microphone input by saying stream.read. This will read it in different chunks. And then we can append the different chunks to a frames, to a list of different frames. Then we close the stream again. And then we can use the frames to work with this. For example, here we use the wave module again and then say wave file.write frames and dump all the frames again to a wave file. Another alternative to read the microphone input is sound device. This also gives you bindings for port audio and has a few convenience functions to record and play the audio. So this is a little bit simpler to use than Pi Audio, but it also gives you less control on a lower level. So we can also install it with pip install sound device, then we import it. And this is how easily we record the microphone input. So we simply say sound device record with the duration, the sample rate, the number of channels and other parameters. Then we can say sound device wait and then we have it. And then we can simply say sound device play and play the recording again. And yeah, that's how easily we can do it with sound device. Next we have PyDub. With this we can manipulate audio with a simple and easy high level interface. And with this we can also work with other file formats, for example if we need a mp3 file. So we can also install it by saying pip install PyDub. Then we can for example import the audio segment. Then we can read the WAV file by saying from WAV. And this also works with other formats like for example from mp3. And this is how easily we can manipulate the data. For example, we can boost the volume like this. We can repeat the clip by simply multiplying it. We can do things like fade in or fade out. Then we can export it again and specify a different format. And yeah, this is how to work with PyDub. 
Next, we have Librosa. This is the most popular library for music and audio analysis. So if you need to do any kind of analysis, there's probably no way around Librosa. We can also install it with pip and then we can easily load the data. This will give us a one-dimensional NumPy array. So now we can work with this and also the sample rate. Then it has built-in functions to easily plot the data. So here we say display wave plot and then here we have the wave plot. We can also do other kinds of plots. For example, we can say display.specshow and plot the spectrogram. And then it has um, all kinds of feature analysis functions. For example, in this little example code, I extract the spectral centroid and plot this. So it has a lot of different functions to do audio analysis. And for this, I just recommend to check out the documentation. And the last library I want to show you is Torch Audio. This is probably the king of all audio processing libraries. So with this, we can do all kinds of audio and signal processing and it's built on top of PyTorch. It provides IO signal and data processing functions, data sets, model implementations and application components. So a lot of functionality. It probably takes a little bit of time to learn it, but we have a whole tutorial on our channel that walks you through all the different basics and I will link it here and below the video. So we can also very easily load a WAV file, then we get the waveform and this is a PyTorch tensor. Then again, we get the sample rate. Then we can easily do resampling by using the torch audio functional functions and then we can apply f.resample. Then here we can also apply a different low pass filter with or a different resampling method if you're familiar with this. Then you can apply different effects to the audio file. For example, here we change the speed and again apply a low pass filter and we can apply reverberation to give a dramatic feeling. So again, I will walk you through this in the other uh, tutorial that I will link here. And yeah, this is how to use the Torch audio library. All right, then these are, in my opinion, the most important libraries in Python for audio processing. If I missed any library, then let us know in the comments. And if you want to see more in detail tutorials about any of these libraries, then also let us know in the comments and subscribe to our channel for more content. And then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.